dear committee members, dear colleagues, dear friends, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. As chairperson of the World Heritage Committee, I'm very pleased to welcome you to this 14th extraordinary session of the World Heritage Committee. As you know, sessions of World Heritage Committee are also open to state parties to the convention, which are now members of the committee as observers. Taking this opportunity, I'd like to warmly welcome Somalia. Somalia has indeed become the 194th state party to the World Heritage Convention a few days ago on 23rd October. Dear colleagues, since the beginning of the year 2020, the unprecedented global health crisis has seriously impaired the global efforts in world heritage conservation. Many world heritage properties have closed and much of the protection efforts have been put into suspension due to the pandemic. The world heritage sites in vulnerable situation are particularly affected. However, COVID-19 also highlighted our commitment and the importance of our concerted efforts for world heritage conservation, reminding us of the interdependence between man and nature. And all nations are living in a community with a shared future, which requires all of us to act together and urgently to advance the course of world heritage protection. As a response to the pandemic in March 2020, on behalf of the committee, I communicated the secretariat and the advisory bodies to express our solidarity. In the past few months, I have approved with the recommendations of the panel experts 26 applications for international assistance from 18 states parties, most of which are priority countries identified by the committee. That said, I would like to thank all of you for your continuous support to me and to the work of the committee under this special circumstance. My, heart, my heartfelt appreciation also goes to the Secretariat and the advisory bodies for your outstanding work, which contributes to the continuity of the World Heritage Protection Undertaking. As for the preparation of the 44th session of World Heritage Committee, I can assure you that the Chinese government has attached great importance to the preparation of this session. And the preparation work has been proceeding as planned with close communication with the Secretariat at every step. I believe it will be a very successful event. Dear colleagues, you will remember that due to the worldwide COVID-19 pandemic and in line with Rule 4.1 of the Rules of Procedure of the Committee, I requested the agreement of the members of the Bureau to postpone the 44th session of the Committee to a later date. Following this first consultation, the Bureau members unanimously agreed on the postponing of the session. And I informed all of you of the decision accordingly by my letter dated 13th April 2020. I then launched on 31st August a second consultation of the Bureau members regarding the holding of the 44th session of the committee. Following this consultation, I convened an online meeting of the Bureau members on 16th October 2020 to further discuss this matter. Committee members were invited 
to attend the meeting as observers. The Bureau has reached the consensus that the conditions were not met to hold the 44th session in 2020. The Bureau has reached such an agreement and in conformity with Rule 52 of the Rules of Procedure of the Committee. The Committee itself has to meet in plenary to suspend Rule 2.1 of our Rules of Procedure, stating that, I quote, the Committee shall meet at least once per year in ordinary session, unquote. Dot. The Director of the World Heritage Center shared this requirement with all of you by letter on 16th October last, and a majority of two-thirds of committee members concurred with the holding of this present extraordinary session. We therefore meet today in the 14th extraordinary session of the World Heritage Committee to discuss the next step of this postponement process, namely to suspend Rule 2.1 of the Rules of Procedure of the Committee and to discuss the dates for the 44th session of the Committee in 2021. This meeting presents an opportunity for all of you as members of the Committee to share your views regarding the possible dates of the session. I'm confident that upholding the spirit of solidarity, we will have a fruitful discussion and come out together with a satisfactory solution with consensus in the best interest of the World Heritage Convention. Before we start our discussion, Allow me to give the floor to Mr. Ernesto Ottoni, UNESCO Assistant Director General for Culture. Mr. Ottoni, the floor is yours. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, Chers membres du Comité du Patrimoine Mondial, Mesdames et Messieurs, les Ambassadeurs, les Délégués, nous sommes très heureux de vous retrouver aujourd'hui à l'occasion de cette 14e session extraordinaire du Comité du Patrimoine Mondial. Nous nous félicitons de la tenue de cette réunion qui sans doute sera une étape cruciale concernant le report de la 44e session du Comité du patrimoine mondial après la décision du bureau le 16 octobre dernier. Aujourd'hui, comme l'a indiqué... Do you, do you hear me? Somebody on the chat? No sound. We can hear. Egypt says we can hear. Ah, the interpretation. I can try to do it in English. It's the French one to the English, or the English to the French? Ah. La plateforme d'interprétation a craché. Il faudrait faire en anglais pour que. Apparently, they have some technical issues. So, if you give us, Mr. President, two minutes. No problem. Thank you so much. If you want, I can try to do it in English and then in French, so everybody can understand, if it's okay with you. Yes, yes. Okay. So today we are here, as uh, Mr. President of the committee told us before, 
to statue on a very good, a very important point that it's about the 44th session in 2021. Um, as I said it before during the bureau meeting, um, with the objective that you can continue to do your work of the committee, it is very important to ensuring the visibility of the statutory process. The decision that you will take without any doubt will be the most important decision for the tenure of the 44th session of the committee. Mr. President, dear members of the committee, let be assured that the Secretariat will follow to give all the help on logistic side and statutory side also in the new uh, etapes of the steps of the organization of the 44th session of the committee. I have no doubt that with your presidents, we will achieve most of the productive and constructive exchanges to take the best decision possible to put in place the 44th session. I wanted to thank you to all the delegation of China and the National Commission and yourself for all the help that you have been giving us during this difficult and extraordinary time. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Attorney. Thank you for the lot of work you have done for consensus before the meeting. <laughs> Dear colleagues, before we start discussing this agenda item, I'd like to give the floor to Ms. Rosler, Director of the World Heritage Center, who will provide us with some logistical explanation for the conduct of this online meeting. This item is adoption of the agenda. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, so for giving me the floor, I hope that everybody received a technical note for this meeting and had a look at it, um, as it provides guidance for a smooth conduct of our online meeting today on the Interprefy platform. And I'm looking at our interpreters. I hope that everything is now sorted out. Uh, I would like to recall a few important organizational yes. points. The meeting is conducted online with the possibility to request the floor for a limited number of participants. An additional member per delegation can also follow the meeting as a viewer only via the webcast. The simultaneous interpretation is in principle available in English and French, and you can select the language panel of your choice through the interpretation button. So I hope you found the button. If you have selected an interpretation language while the interpreter is muted, you will hear the floor. When the interpreter is speaking, then you will start hearing the interpretation into the other language. This way, you do not need to switch between channels and will only hear the language you have chosen. When taking the floor, you are kindly requested to speak clearly and at a normal speaking pace to enable clear and accurate interpretation. As far as possible, do not use your computer's audio device. By using your computer's microphone, you might indeed create an audio interference for other participants and the interpreters. Therefore, please prefer using the headset with headphones and the microphone. If you wish to request the floor, please kindly ask for permission to speak by clicking on the green hand icon. icon. So this is a green hand to raise your hand. To ensure your request has well been taken into account, kindly keep your hand raised until you are giving the floor. 
Allow me to remind you at this stage that, as indicated in a recent email communication from the Secretariat to all states parties, only participants who have registered on the Secretariat's webpage will be able to take the floor. A speaker's list will be drawn up and the floor is given by the chairperson to the participants requesting to speak. Keep in mind that observer states parties will be given the floor once all committee members have expressed themselves. Once the chairperson gives you the floor, please activate your microphone before starting your intervention. Once you have finished your intervention, please use the disconnect, the disconnect button to stop your streaming. Red means you are streaming. Green, me, green means that you are no longer streaming. Keep your microphone muted throughout the meeting when not speaking. Should need be, members of the committee can raise a point of order by writing point of order in the public chat box, allowing it to be immediately decided upon by the chairperson. Our legal advisor's office is following the meeting today and remains on call throughout the duration of our meeting if any questions related to legal matters arise. And also our advisory bodies, ECOMOS, IUSN, and ECROM are also with, you, uh, with us today. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Dr. Rosler. I now invite you to adopt the agenda of the 14th Extraordinary Session of World Heritage Committee contained in document WHC slash 20 slash 14 ext dot com slash 2, which was provided to you with the invitation letter of this meeting. Are there any interventions or uh, amendments to this agenda? Apparently, there is nobody requesting the floor, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. It's so decided. I now declare the agenda of the 14th Extraordinary Session of the World Heritage Committee adopted. Thank you. Dear colleagues, I now invite you to proceed with our next item, the suspension of the Rule 2.1 of the Rules of Procedure of the World Heritage Committee. As evoked earlier, the Bureau reached the consensus that conditions were not met to hold the 44th session of the World Heritage Committee in 2020 and consequently decided, decided not to hold it in 2020. We therefore meet today to suspend Rule 2.4, which states, I quote, the committee shall meet at least once per year in ordinary session, unquote, to allow for the 44th session to take place in 2021. Dear colleagues, I now invite you to proceed with the suspension of Rule 2.1 of the Committee's Rules of Procedure. Are there any objections to the suspension of this rule? Mr. Chair, there is nobody who requests the floor. Thank you. Okay. As there were no objections. We have therefore reached the two-thirds majority required for the suspension of the Rule 2.1. I declare Rule 2.1 suspended. Thank you very much. Item 4 new dates of the 44th session of World Heritage Committee. Dear colleagues, we now move to our next agenda item, item four, to discuss the dates 
of the 44th session of the committee. As Rule 2.1 of the Rules of Procedure was suspended, we shall now discuss the organization of the 44th session in 2021. As you will remember, a number of possible options for holding the 44th session in 2021 were provided by the Secretariat several weeks ago. First of all, I'd, I would suggest that we all agree on the option to be chosen. In this regard, I would like, with your permission, to give the floor to Mr. Ottone to present us document WHC slash 20 slash 14 xcom slash 4, which was sent to you on 27th October 2020. Mr. Ottone, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Je voudrais savoir si la traduction du français à l'anglais fonctionne. Oui? I suppose so. OK. Euh, Monsieur le Président, chers membres du comité, vous vous souviendrez que lors de notre réunion d'information le 30 septembre dernier, certaines options pour la tenue de la 44e session du comité du patrimoine mondial ont été présentées aux États partis. Si au cours de cette réunion très suivie, certaines préférences ont été exprimées, comme vient le dire Monsieur le Président, nous avons, fait, nous avons reçu une grande quantité de questions qui nous a obligés à prendre chacun des, des options que nous avions et euh, nous a fait arriver à une nouvelle option qui vous a été présentée et qui aujourd'hui se retrouve dans le document de travail 14EXT.com4. Celle-ci vous a été adressée le 27 octobre dernier pour, compte, pour tenir compte de toutes vos préoccupations et assurer d'avoir un consensus vis-à-vis -vis de quelle option prendre pour la tenue de la 44e session. Comme il est reflété à l'annexe 1 de ce document 4, il pourrait en effet être envisagé qu'une 44e session élargie se tienne en 2021, avec un ordre de jour couvrant à la fois l'ordre du jour de la 44e session initiale, c'est-à-dire celle qui devait se tenir en 2020 et qui vient d'être prise comme décision d'être tenue en 2021, avec euh, tel qu'adopté euh, par le comité et qui couvrirait l'agenda, ou plutôt l'agenda, oui, euh, qui devrait se tenir à la 45e en 2021. Donc c'est un carry-over qu'on appelle de celle qu'on n'a pas tenue cette année, plus celle qu'on devait avoir normalement l'année prochaine. C'est pour ça que cette option s'appelle 44e Extended. Quels seraient les avantages Tout d'abord, les six statutaires. Tous les États partis ont soutenu l'importance de ne pas affecter les cycles actuellement en cours. Ceci permettrait de rétablir, dès la fin de la 44e session élargie, en 2021, le cycle normal. De plus, une telle 44e session élargie nécessiterait que très peu de suspension du règlement intérieur du comité. Enfin, un tel scénario, la 45e session du comité, initialement prévue en 2021, se tiendrait en 2022, avec un ordre de jour provisoire qui sera adopté par le comité à la fin de la 44e euh, extended, élargie. Le bureau de la 45e session serait alors élu à la fin de la 44e élargi comme prévu par le règlement intérieur. Dit en autre mot, les membres actuels du comité auront l'opportunité d'avoir fait les quatre cycles qui correspondent aux quatre années seulement en trois comités, mais auront fait le travail 
qui a été demandé par euh, l'élection pour être membre du comité. Monsieur le Président, Mesdames et Messieurs les membres du comité, cette 44e session élargie serait bien entendu conçue à titre tout à fait, et je dis bien le mot exact, exceptionnel, dans le cadre d'une réponse spécifique à la situation sans précédent globale liée à la pandémie mondiale de la Covid-19, étant étendu, entendu qu'un tel arrangement ne saurait en aucun cas constituer un précédent pour l'avenir. En outre, il devrait être entendu que toute décision dérogatoire que vous pourriez être amené prendre de façon exceptionnelle pour permettre la tenue de cette 44e session élargie ne saurait avoir une quelconque incidence sur les délibérations futures du comité. Je voudrais profiter pour dire trois petites choses. La première, même si vous prenez une décision aujourd'hui, elle pourrait être affectée par l'évolution de la pandémie. Et c'est la seule chose qui n'est pas dans le contrôle de nos mains. Et c'est important à savoir. La deuxième chose, c'est, euh, comme vous avez été, euh, la plupart d'entre vous, euh, présente euh, lors du, de la consultation de Executive Board la semaine dernière, et aussi, certains d'entre vous ont participé à la réunion du comité du patrimoine immatériel, vendredi dernier. Des décisions sont prises, mais ce n'est pas la même décision pour chaque euh, convention, ou en ce cas, pour ce que vous décidez en tant que représentant de certains comités ou de executive board. Donc, chacune peut avoir des solutions différentes. Et ceci est important pour comprendre. Finalement, je voudrais remercier et euh, demander pardon si jamais j'ai appelé les différents euh, membres du comité à des heures de dîner <rire> ou de déjeuner que j'ai interrompu lors des appels que j'ai euh, menés avec chacun d'entre vous pour aller dans ce consensus de trouver une solution qui soit la plus efficace la plus efficiente pour le travail qui euh, va être entrepris par le comité lors de cette 44e session l'année prochaine. Je voudrais profiter pour remercier une fois de plus le président, toute la délégation chinoise, bien sûr le secrétariat et aussi euh, le département légal avec euh, Santiago et Chantal qui nous ont aidés pour aller dans ce sens et trouver les meilleures solutions pour tous nos États membres et pour la tenue de cette 44e Extended qui vous est proposée aujourd'hui à partir de l'écoute que nous avons fait de vos remarques, de vos suggestions et de vos demandes. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Une fois de plus. Before opening the floor on this matter, I'd like to give the floor to the director of the World Heritage Center, Ms. Rosler, to provide us with some clarifications on procedural matters related to the document just presented by Mr. Otene. Ms. Rosler, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairperson, for giving me the floor. And allow me just to give uh, a little bit of information on the procedural arrangements related to the presentation by Mr. Otone, uh, which he just made on this uh, extended 44th session. First of all, the agenda items of the extended 44th session. As was highlighted by Mr. Otona, the agenda of the extended 44th session will consist of the agenda items already planned for the 44th session, as was adopted, you remember, in Baku at the 43rd session, to which will be, we need to be added all the items already foreseen for 2021 by decision of the committee at its previous sessions. The Secretariat has identified three specific agenda items which will need to be added to the extended 44th session. One item is World Heritage, the World Heritage Convention and Sustainable Development. 
Another item is the report on the results of the third cycle of the periodic reporting exercise in Africa. And the third item is the progress report on the implementation of the action plans for the second cycle of periodic reporting in the other regions. The item on the budget would need to include another component regarding the budget proposals of the World Heritage Fund under the next biennium that means um, 22 to 23, as is always the case as the last committee session in the biennium. The reporting period for regular items such as the Secretariat's report, the Advisory Body's report, the report on capacity building activities, among others, will simply be extended from one to two years without any additional documents needed. The 79 individual state of conservation reports, which were initially foreseen for examination by the 45th session in 21, will simply be included in the agenda item 7B, together with all the state of conservation reports initially planned for the 44th session in 2020. There will be, therefore, 197 State of Conservation reports presented to the extended 44th session under item 7B and 53 under item 7A for the properties on the list of World Heritage in Danger. As announced already during the information meeting on 30 September, for properties facing conservation issues of utmost importance and for which a state of conservation report was initially planned for the 44th session in 2020, the state's parties concerned will have the possibility to provide the Secretariat with additional information by the deadline of 1st February 2021 at the latest. Indeed, due to the workload, the World Heritage Center and the advisory bodies will not be able to review any information after the deadline. But I would like to take the opportunity to thank all those states with whom we are already in dialogue uh, on a number of uh, critical conservation issues. Now, for the nomination process. A similar approach then for the State of Conservation Reports will be adopted for the examination of nominations, which will be all dealt with under the usual agenda item 8B. There will be therefore a total of 26 nominations initially planned for the 44th session in 2020, and as you know, we have 22 nominations, a maximum of 22 nominations originally foreseen for 2021. However, as you are aware, irrespective of the option chosen by the committee, it may happen that for some nominations due to the current COVID-19 pandemic, but also for some uh, sites which have security issues, the planned evaluation missions cannot be carried out in due course and the evaluation may consequently not be ready for examination by the committee at its session in 21. In case such a situation arises, the committee may want to decide the nominations originally to be examined in 21 that have been evaluated and are ready for examination should be uh, examined in 21 as planned, and that nominations for which the planned evaluations could not be achieved in due course for the session in 21 will be then examined in 22. Or alternatively, the committee can also say um, due to these exceptional circumstances, the committee may wish to decide that all nominations foreseen be, uh, for 21 be examined in 22. But I think, um, knowing uh, the committee members, I think they are interested to know about their nominations. In any case, a decision of the committee is needed on this matter. And therefore, um, Mr. Chairperson, you may wish to give the floor also to ICOMOS and IUCN to provide the distinguished committee members with some insights on the current status of the evaluation missions and their outlook. Finally, Mr. Chairperson, I would like to suggest for clarity that the full agenda of the 44th session be included in a draft decision that will be adopted. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Dr. Rosner. I now open the floor for discussion on the option to be chosen. 
you may request for the floor right now. I may kindly invite the Secretariat to establish a speaker's list. You have no way, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. I invite the Secretariat to read out the speaker's list. The Secretariat, please. For the time being, Mr. Chair, you have Norway, and we are looking whether there's anybody else. So you may wish to give the floor to Norway first. Thank you. Ah, it's Norway, Thailand, and St. Kitts, please. Okay. And Brazil. Thank you very much. Now I give the floor to the representative of Norway. Norway, Thailand, Thailand, Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you so much for organizing this meeting. Mr. Chair, Norway supports Section 5, referred to as Extended Protocol Session of the World Heritage Committee, taking place in June slash July 2021. We would like to stress that such an extended session would take place on an absolute exceptional basis due to the unprecedented situation of the COVID-19 pandemic and cannot set any precedent for the, for the future. Norway thanks the Secretariat for proposing this compromise solution. Due to the absence of a committee meeting in 2020, we therefore agreed to review two cycles of nominations to the World Heritage List during the extended 44th session, with the understanding that all nominations that will, that will be examined by the committee in 2021 must have been subject to evaluation missions. We also agree to review state of conservation reports foreseen for examination by the committee in 2021. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much for your comment. Now I invite representative of Thailand to, uh, to take the floor. The floor is yours. Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me from Thailand? Good evening. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Thailand support yes. the proposal. Thailand? Yes. Thailand support the proposal from the Secretariat, and therefore we support the option five. That's all. Can you hear me? Yes. The representative of Thailand? Mr. Chair, Thailand just supported the extended session, and the next speaker would be Brazil. Okay, now please, the representative of Brazil. Ah, sorry. You have the floor. Sorry, it sent kids and to be followed by Brazil. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, sorry. Now, uh, the representative of Sankis and the Nevis, you have the floor. Good, good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, uh, distinguished colleagues. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for uh, agreeing to hold this extraordinary session. I'm going to be very brief. The government of St. Um fully supports the extended session uh, of the 44th session of the World Heritage Committee to be held in 2021, sometime over June uh, or July, or perhaps straddling both June and July. Um, as a small island developing state, we are happy, a lot happier with this solution. Uh, we were never terribly in favor of um, protracted sessions or accumulating or su successive sessions of the 44th and 45th session. We just felt that this was too much of a burden on a small island state like ourselves in terms of resource 
uh, deployment. So we're very happy indeed with that particular compromise. And I congratulate the ODG for uh, his efforts and initiative in finding this particular compromise. Uh, let me um, suggest, however, in spite of um, great attempts uh, and effort by the Secretariat to ensure that we minimize the number of items that have to be reviewed um, on, on the list for the 44th session. I'm going to suggest that we perhaps consider streamlining uh, the 44th session to ensure maximum uh, efficiency and optimal use of our time and resource deployment. And that is to suggest that certain items could perhaps be subject to review remotely uh, without discussion uh, and a decision taken um, by, as we refer to it, by circulation. In other words, uh, if there are no objections before a certain date, a certain deadline set by the uh, Secretariat, the item is considered to be approved. This would free up time and resources, um, both direct and indirect costs that thereof involved as well, and ensure that we can focus on, on other substantive issues. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your comment and uh, proposal. Now, the representative of Brazil, now you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can you, thank you, can you hear me? OK. Yes. Uh, at the outset, Mr. Chairman, I would like to warn me, thank you as well as the delegation of China, the World Heritage Center, the advisory bodies, and of course, Mr. Ottoni, for their best efforts in finding solutions to overcome the difficulties generated by the current sanitary crisis in the activities of the World Heritage Convention. In our view, Mr. President, considering that no committee session can be held this year and that few countries would wish to lose a whole year in the activities of the committee, any solution for rescheduling the 44th session must consider that the agenda of two sessions should be covered in 2021. Among the options that would allow this scenario, Brazil's consider options five to be ideal, as it would avoid the legal complexities as well as the logistical challenges of other options. It is certainly the simplest and the most practical solution and it would allow for the full normalization of the committee's activities in 2022. There are nonetheless just two concerns regarding option five that we would like to bring to the attention of this committee. First, it is probably probable that due to the COVID crisis, not all nominations presented for examination in 2021 will be ready for appreciation by the committee at the time it convenes. It will be nonetheless important that most of them could be appreciated, assuring the broadest geographical base possible. In this regard, Brazil would like to ask the World Heritage Center and the advisory bodies for their cooperation in extending deadlines for evaluation missions for the remaining candidate sites, taking into account that the sanitary situation is evolving differently in different parts of the world. Second, Mr. President, it will also be important to assure that nominations that cannot be examined in 2021, despite all efforts, 
be postponed for examination of the next session without affecting the full normalization of the committee's activities in 2022. Thus, in order to address both of the concerns, Brazil has an amendment to the decision that will be taken by the committee on this item four, and will ask committee members to take it into their consideration. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your comments. Now, I'd like to give the floor to the representative of Guatemala. Representative of Guatemala, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President, and um, good morning from Paris uh, to you, to the uh, delegation of China, and um, also to the um, distinguished delegates and distinguished colleagues, and to the Secretariat, and to Mr. Ottoni. Um, first of all, I would really like to thank all of your efforts, uh, the technical side and the coordination side as well, um, regarding all these unprecedented issues and um, the flexibility and the um, quickness in which you all have responded, uh, even though uh, these times are very uncertain. Um, the delegation of Guatemala uh, supports um, the fifth option, which actually calls us to, uh, and the goal is to come back to normal as soon as possible, as soon as the current pandemic situation um, may allow us. And as, as Mr. Rotone said at the beginning, um, it's, a, a, in, it's a pity that we cannot set a date in, in 2021, but of course that's the obvious situation because we, cannot, we do not manage and we do not control how to uh, develop um, into the near and, and middle term future. So um, the, the, as I said before, the delegation of Guatemala supports the fifth option and also would like to um, consider having in mind that the goal is to come back to the normal path and circles as soon as possible, uh, that we uh, consider um, the flexibility into the nomination and the uh, analysis cycles that take place. So as we're trying to be flexible, and as we're trying to, 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 to go to be flexible and not to um, uh, endanger or um, hinder any um, procedure, at the, the less possible, uh, we're requesting also, um, as Brazil proposed, um, that a flexibility is also taken into account with the advisory bodies and uh, the... the, the, the um, um, committee and also at the um, uh, World Heritage Center. So having said that, um, we uh, are eager and we are uh, supportive of having this 44 extended session next year, but also that all cycles and all nominations and all state of conservation analysis and missions actually uh, take place with flexibility so in 2022, uh, if we can, we go back to normal. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for your comment. Now, I'd like to uh, give the floor to the representative of Russian Federation. Now you have the floor. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, do you hear me? Mm. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, first of all, uh, let me transmit my heartfelt greetings to uh, all the participants of this meeting, uh, especially to you and uh, uh, Mr. Atone, uh, Madam Rosler, and all the members of the committee. Uh, I would like to express uh, our great uh, 
um, recognition um, and thankfulness uh, for the effort uh, made uh, by the Secretariat, uh, by yourself in the last month, uh, in order to find the best possible solution for this extremely difficult and um, uh, unprecedented situation uh, within the World Heritage Committee. And uh, 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 we, uh, we are glad that uh, the final solution uh, proposed by the Secretariat, uh, the so-called Option 5, uh, in our view answers uh, most of uh, our concerns and uh, seems to be uh, the best uh, from the viewpoint of um, uh, both financial and institutional aspects. Uh, at the same time, uh, uh, we would like to see a little bit more clarity uh, in our uh, final decision on the subject. Uh, we don't see clearly uh, uh, um, if the extended session will be 44th uh, only or uh, will it be 44th, 45th? Uh, so uh, I think this um, uh, element has to be uh, precised uh, uh, for obvious reasons, uh, because uh, the next session, uh, there is also a question, what, uh, uh, what will be its number? Uh, let me remind you that uh, Russian Federation uh, <laughs> Uh, last year uh, has proposed uh, uh, its candidacy to hold uh, uh, the next uh, uh, session of the committee after the extended session, uh, 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 that is uh, to say in 2022. Uh, and uh, uh, so far um, our candidacy is the only one. Uh, no other country pretended to hold uh, the session in uh, two, 2022. Uh, uh, let me say that we deliberately uh, avoided uh, the year uh, 2021 uh, because uh, we didn't want to, to be rivals of anyone, uh, any other members uh, of, the, um, uh, of the committee. But as for uh, 2022, uh, uh, it's a very important question for us because um, uh, for a number of reasons, and especially the difficulties uh, caused by uh, the pandemic COVID-19, uh, we decided to start the preparation for the session in 2022 uh, earlier than usual. Uh, we, um, uh, uh, and, and now the preparation uh, for the session uh, is fully underway. Uh, important decisions, uh, both budgetary and institutional, uh, uh, were taken. Uh, um, the program is being worked out, uh, including uh, a number of uh, side events uh, and so on. Uh, of course, uh, we attach great importance that uh, this session um, will take place uh, the year 22, the year of 50th anniversary uh, of the World Heritage uh, Convention. Uh, and uh, um, uh, given our experience in organizing uh, big international events, uh, we want to do our best uh, uh, to make uh, a session uh, which could uh, become really uh, a milestone uh, in the history of uh, the World Heritage Committee. Uh, so uh, I would, uh, I fully understand that according to the rules of procedure, uh, the decision uh, about um, the place of the next uh, session uh, will be taken in uh, 2021 at the extended session as it was already uh, mentioned here. Uh, but uh, I would like to ask uh, uh, to put uh, into the final decision uh, just uh, a couple of lines uh, saying that the committee takes note of the invitation by the Russian Federation to host the uh, 45th uh, or 46th, as you like. Uh, session in 2022. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Thank you. Thank you for your comment and the proposal. Now I'd like to give the floor to the representative of Spain. The representative of Spain, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Herman. We would like to congratulate you to do this meeting. Spain also would like to thank the World Heritage Center for the work carried out to date, presenting a great diversity of proposals in order to raise the best for the future and the proper functioning of the convention. Spain, after studying all the proposals, supports option five, because we really think it's the best option to solve the actual situation. Thank you very much, Chair Person. Thank you very much for your comment. Now I'd like to give the floor to the representative of Australia. The representative of Australia, now you have the floor. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairperson, and uh, we uh, in Australia uh, very much, very, very much would like to thank the uh, you, um, Chair, um, the Secretariat, uh, and uh, Assistant uh, Director General uh, for Culture for the huge amount of work that has been done uh, in uh, enabling uh, this discussion uh, at this extraordinary session to uh, occur today. Uh, Australia supports option five, uh, as outlined by Mr. Otona, uh, as a pragmatic solution that will enable the normal cycle of the World Heritage Committee to uh, resume as soon as possible. And we do note that um, it is still difficult to uh, foresee uh, when that might be. Um, and I understand that we're uh, aiming for the 44th session to be held uh, in the middle uh, of next year. And I guess we'll um, see um, exactly when that is. But I think for the purposes of planning, having an objective of the meeting being held in that window of uh, late June through July uh, would make um, great, the greatest sense to us. Um, we agree with uh, the, the comments made by uh, our distinguished colleagues from Norway uh, that conduct uh, that uh, uh, in conducting an extended 44th session in no way should uh, set a precedent for a future session. This is uh, an extraordinary circumstance we're faced by and we need to uh, respond in those terms. Um, we particularly note um, that uh, this will be a very big agenda, more than 200 state of conservation reports and we'll need to be giving careful consideration um, to uh, which dossiers uh, will be um, opened for uh, discussion. Um, I was very pleased to um, hear uh, Director Rossler's advice that for nominations where um, uh, evaluation missions have not been uh, able to be held, uh, that uh, they uh, would be or could be held over uh, to 2022. Um, and this point, Australia believes, um, is essential to accept. Uh, we would be very concerned if there was a proposition um, to emerge that somehow uh, we would uh, compromise on the, the quality of the evaluation process uh, and the integrity, therefore, of decisions um, taken by the committee. Um, on the proposal that more time be allowed for the advisory bodies to uh, complete evaluations, I think we would benefit from hearing, uh, Mr Chairman, uh, from the advisory bodies about uh, whether that is feasible because it is Australia's understanding that already um, the advisory bodies have uh, pushed back the usual deadlines uh, by which um, the, uh, the uh, evaluation uh, missions are conducted for nominations. And um, this means that all of their processes have necessarily had to uh, shift back a bit, but it is really important that uh, they are able to, to run their full and proper processes, which include um, their panel meetings and the, the, the wide dialogue that occurs within the advisory bodies in order to, to bring their advice um, to uh, the committee. Um, I think it is important that we do recognise that their capacity to do their work, um, as it has for all of us, um, has been dramatically impacted uh, by the pandemic. Uh, and in proposing a, a super session uh, next year, um, we're very mindful that uh, the advisory bodies are being asked to take on uh, additional work. So 
not so much with the evaluations um, because they were expected, but certainly if uh, timeframes are pushed back, that will make all the more difficult their job of conducting the evaluations. But um, those same resources you know, also need to be dedicated towards a much larger body of work to be done on state of conservations. Uh, with um, the, the ones that are of particular conservation concern being opened up for additional um, uh, input back from states parties by the 1st of February. Uh, so the, the state of conservation load is actually larger than it would be in a normal cycle. Uh, so we need to be mindful of that uh, in, uh, in um, settling uh, this agenda. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your comment and the suggestion. Now I invite the representative of Hungary to uh, take the floor. The floor is yours. Thank you, Chairman. Good afternoon to everyone, or good morning or good evening, whichever applies. Thank you very much, Chairperson, for convening uh, this extraordinary session of the committee. Uh, Thank you, Assistant Director General Ottone and Director Rössler for your excellent presentations. And uh, I also like to thank the World Heritage Center as well as the advisory bodies uh, for the work and tireless efforts uh, to cope with the present uh, very fragile and very difficult and very uncertain uh, situation. As for the options for holding the 44th and 45th session of the committee, uh, we are very grateful for the options offered by the World Heritage Center. Uh, Hungary supports option five, that is to hold an extended 44th session in June or July next year. And we are happy to see that this option seems to enjoy a very broad support of the members of the committee. Against this background, I don't want to repeat all the very valid arguments in favor of this option. Uh, because this has already this have already been expressed very eloquently by other members. I would just like to add one word of caution. We all hope that by next summer the COVID situation will have significantly improved and we can be back to normal. Nonetheless, at the current juncture, uh, when we are in different stages and different waves of the pandemic uh, and in many parts of the world, the situation is rather worsening than improving. I am afraid none of us can give a guarantee that the conditions for organizing a fully fledged session of the committee would be met by next summer. We do hope, we all do hope, but we cannot be sure. Hence, my question, uh, to the Secretariat, to the World Heritage Center primarily, is whether uh, the center is considering any contingency options uh, in case, and only if in case, physical meeting would not be possible in June or July next year. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to in invite the representative of Egypt to take the floor. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Can you hear me? Thank you, thank you, uh, Chairperson. And uh, yes. would like to thank you for uh, for presiding over this meeting. And uh, hope that you are safe and everyone here is safe. We would like to thank thank the Secretariat for uh, the presentation of Option Five. We totally and fully support it. We believe it's uh, the best possible uh, solution that could be taken uh, today in November 2020. Uh, based, of course, under the understanding that uh, there is a big mystery of what's waiting for us uh, next year. Uh, I just have one specific question, uh, if I may, uh, uh, to the Secretariat. Um, I heard from Director Rosler that uh, she mentioned that about the agenda that would be adopted in this meeting, in this extraordinary session. So we are going to adopt uh, the agenda of the upcoming session now. Uh, is this correct or not? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, if yes, then uh, I would like just also to know. Uh, I mean, we are fine with the indicative agenda that has been uh, that has been in this document, but we just wanted to know, and I think also members, uh, not only of the committee but also of the convention, would also like to know 
what is the status of the um, uh, of in, in case they would like to present items or to uh, to have some new items thank you so much thank you very much uh, i know many distinguished members have raised a uh, number of uh, suggestions i will ask the secretariat to make a clarification uh, later ah. Now, I'd like to invite the representative of Ethiopia to take the floor. The floor is yours. The representative of Ethiopia. Okay, can you hear me? Hello, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me? Okay, great. Like yes, very clear. And I would like to thank you, the Chinese delegates, Madam Rostler, uh, Mr. Atony, and the advisory bodies. And I would like to uh, greet everyone. Uh, Ethiopia acknowledges the extended session and supports option five uh, proposed for June or July. Uh, of course, uh, being aware that this uh, could be subject to hearing more updates on uh, the decline of the pandemic. Uh, so we support option five and would like to thank you. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to invite the representative of Uganda to take the floor. The floor is yours. The representative of Uganda. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Well, Chairman. Yeah. <laughs> I want to start by thanking you very much uh, for this uh, very hard work and complex uh, work that you are doing uh, to make sure that. Uh, our institution continues uh, performing as expected in spite of the difficulties that we are facing. I also want to uh, the directors for their presentations and the World uh, Health, uh, uh, the World uh, Heritage Center for organizing this uh, meeting. Uh, my delegation and my government supports uh, position number five. We agree with uh, what uh, number five proposes in the circumstances, but uh, we would also like to have a few uh, clarifications. As, uh, of course, uh, my fellow delegates have intimated before, we are not com in command of the situation as it has uh, unfolded, and we don't know where it is taking us in the future. So uh, the question here is, what measures do we put in place uh, in case this situation either remains as it is right now, which has made it difficult for the 44th uh, session to go on, or it even gets worse. Uh, are we in a position to keep rule number 2.4 suspended? Or do we have to keep coming back to it as the situations, you know, change? Because we are not sure what is going to happen even after tomorrow. We cannot be sure. Uh, yet, we have to continue doing our work. We, we, what we are not going to, something that we are not going to accept is to allow COVID-19 to control us. We, we have to make sure that uh, we are on top of the situation and we re -go around it to make sure that we continue uh, working normally. Uh, now, the current situation has pushed us to make sure that we take position number five which is really something that we have uh, grappled with 
uh, with a lot of difficulties. How do we avoid this in the future? Can we, for example, map out a way which guarantees that if this situation gets worse, we can continue operating? Or are we going to continue uh, holding sessions, special sessions, to, to keep on suspending rule number 2.4 so that it, it, it enables us to, to, to keep on changing the situation? That is where our, our concern is, so that uh, uh, we, can, we can have a, a clear way forward from now. Because this COVID, like HIV AIDS, might become part of us. If it becomes part of us and we have to, to live, we have to look for a modus of event. If it becomes part of us, how does the World Heritage Committee and uh, of course you, other areas of UNESCO continue operating? So do we keep this rule? permanently suspended until, for example, when we are sure that the situation has come back to normalcy. That is uh, Uganda's uh, main concern, Mr. Chairman. Otherwise, we thank you very much for these efforts. At least now we have hope that uh, the 44th and 45th uh, session uh, have got a chance to take place if uh, as the Muslims would say, inshallah, if the situation <laughs> remains as it is. But how we would like to make sure that we have uh, good contagious measures in case the situation either worsens or remains the same, especially in terms of Rule 2.4 and its suspension. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Now I invite the representative of Saudi Arabia to take the floor. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, yes, uh, thank you for giving me the floor. And uh, I would like to thank the uh, Secretariat uh, uh, for also uh, providing uh, the option number five uh, and would like to thank you for holding uh, this uh, meeting, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, I think uh, given the special circumstances, uh, option five uh, from the point of view of Saudi Arabia is the most reasonable. We support it uh, fully. Uh, in addition, uh, we would like to uh, kindly request uh, from the Secretariat, as uh, our esteemed uh, colleague from uh, Uganda has explained, um, if the Secretariat can kindly provide for us options in case the health uh, situation um, remains uh, for uh, next year, uh, what are the options that are going to take place? Uh, that's for, for the future. Uh, and uh, as my colleague from Uganda has said, inshallah, that is going to be a result. But if not, let's have a, a good contingency plan. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairperson. Thank you very much for your comment. Uh, now I invite the representative of Nigeria to take the floor. The floor is yours. The representative of good Nigeria. Good afternoon. Please, can you hear me? OK. Oh, I send my heart's warm yes. uh, greetings to you, yes. the chair, for all your efforts in trying to see to the well uh, uh, to the organization of this uh, 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 44 uh, section. And I also send my warm greeting to the chairperson, uh, the director, and the director of culture for all your efforts. Nigeria is in support of uh, the option five, which is having the sections in 2021, but with some flexibility, just as was said by Guatemala. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I see many of the delegations are in support of option five. I feel that 
we are close to reach a consensus. Are there any more requests for the floor? No, Mr. Chair, we have not received any further requests. You want me to answer okay. the questions or? Uh, yeah. okay. Dear colleagues. Yes, yes. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, uh, I know uh, some, the, some distinguished members uh, in their comments, they have uh, some proposals and some uh, concerns. Now I Thank give Thank you, the Mr. Floor Chair, but we just got a request from Mali, so I hold back. <laughs> okay, now I give the floor to the representative of Mali. Now the floor is yours. The representative of Mali. Mr. Chair, apparently Mali disconnected, so if you want me to answer the questions first, I can go first. Uh, uh, yes, uh, you can. Uh, Thank you very have much, the floor Mr. First. Chair. So there were a number of questions. The first question was from the Russian Federation, which was for the agenda of the uh, 44th extended session. Uh, this is an agenda which has three additional items, as I explained earlier. So it would not be uh, 44th, 45th, but it's a 44th extended session. Um, and I would also like to confirm um, with the Russian Federation that the Secretariat received on the uh, uh, 6th of April 2020 a letter with an invitation for the World Heritage Committee session in 22 in Kazan. And um, uh, in, pa in the past, the committee um, has taken note of such proposals. So if you wish to take note of this proposal, this can be added to the decision as requested by the Russian Federation. Um, the uh, point from Australia on nominations, I suggest, Mr. Chair, that you give also the floor to ICOMOS and IUCN. Um, I think we had an excellent discussion uh, this morning uh, with the uh, advisory bodies on flexibility with nominations and uh, related to the proposal by Brazil. Um, we have some uh, technical matters, but I think, um, again, we can come to a very good consensus on the draft um, proposed and read out uh, by Brazil. Um, next question from Hungary, Ethiopia and Saudi Arabia. Uh, what will happen if the pandemic uh, continues? Now, of course, the Secretariat uh, has always uh, a plan B, but uh, at this stage, it's very difficult to say. Now, um, in case travel restrictions may affect the location of the session and sanitary, uh, sanitary measures, they may prevent physical meetings. Um, we have, of course, options to hold sessions online. There are hybrid proposals or full online sessions. But uh, as you know, um, the World Heritage Committee is uh, the biggest um, uh, exercise we have here um, at UNESCO, and it may be very difficult with 350 decisions. So we may come back to you uh, and prepare uh, options um, in case uh, we, um, we are facing such a situation. And we would then, um, with the agreement of our Assistant Director General, map out the situation and provide you with uh, options, uh, looking into all the different options. Then we had a question from Egypt concerning the agenda. The agenda for uh, the session was already adopted at the Baku meeting, meaning at, on the last day of the 43rd session, the agenda for the 44th session was adopted. Now, as you have heard from Mr. Otone and myself, there will be three items to be added for an extended session, plus the items are not changing on state of conservation and on nominations, meaning items 7B and, uh, and 8B, uh, the titles remain the same, but we will have 
more state of conservation reports and more nominations to be presented. So this is the proposal in front of you and um, to the delegate of Egypt, uh, this agenda will be added uh, into the decision so that we have full clarity what are the items uh, to come up at the next extended session. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rosela. Now I'd like to invite uh, the advisory bodies to take the floor. The representative of Mr. E Commerce. Mr. Chair, I think Mali now you is have also the floor. back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I give the floor first Merci. to Est the representative of Mali. Now you have the floor. Oui, ça marche. Merci beaucoup. Je voudrais tout d'abord remercier le président pour la gestion de ce débat, pour cette session extraordinaire. Je voudrais également adresser mes remerciements au secrétariat, au Centre du patrimoine mondial, pour les différentes options qui nous ont été proposées pour la continuité des travaux de notre comité. Alors, je vais, pas, je vais aller directement au but. Après consultation, nous souhaitons apporter notre plein soutien à l'option 5, c'est-à-dire à, à une session élargie euh, pour, pour, pour la prochaine session du, du, du comité. Donc, pour toutes les raisons qui ont, qui ont été rappelées ici par le secrétariat et aussi pour, euh, par d'autres États membres, nous pensons que c'est l'option la plus optimale. Voilà. Merci beaucoup, je vous remercie. Mr. Chair, you have now e-commerce and then IUCN, please. Yes, now the representative of e-commerce, e you have the floor. E-commerce. Oui. C'est vrai que la pandémie. Ça, ça marche. Ça marche. Oui. Yes. Ok. Euh, il est vrai que la pandémie actuelle a profondément bouleversé l'organisation des missions d'évaluation et que une très grande flexibilité a déjà dû être développée depuis le mois de juillet. Et j'en profite d'ailleurs pour remercier les efforts extraordinaires qui ont été faits par la plupart des États partis et des autorités en charge de l'organisation des missions pour décaler des dates, adapter un visa en dernière minute. Tout à l'heure, M. Ottone s'est excusé d'avoir passé certains coups de téléphone à l'heure des déjeuners et des dîners, mais nous, nous avons aussi conscience d'avoir dérangé des équipes pendant les week-ends, les samedis, les dimanches pour décaler des dates de mission et essayer de trouver des, des solutions. J'en profite aussi pour remercier mon équipe et Madame Bourdin, la directrice de l'unité d'évaluation, pour vraiment le travail fantastique qui a été fait. Et la, parce que la conclusion, c'est qu'à l'heure actuelle, en ce qui concerne ICOMOS, nous, nous avons été en mesure, nous sommes en mesure, compte tenu de ce qui se passe en ce moment sur le terrain, de réaliser à peu près 75% des missions d'évaluation qui étaient prévues, c'est-à-dire 14, 15 sur les, les 19 ce qui est quand même euh, un résultat auquel on ne pensait pas être en mesure d'aboutir de, de, euh, au, au mois de juillet quand on a commencé à organiser ces, ces missions. Euh, donc, euh, on, on a déjà fait preuve de flexibilité puisque initialement toutes les missions devaient se, dé, devaient se dérouler avant la fin du mois d'octobre pour pouvoir être prises en compte par le panel de l'ICOMOS qui se réunit à la fin du mois de novembre. Nous avons déjà repoussé cette date d'environ deux semaines, puisqu'il y a des missions qui se déroulent aujourd'hui, qui sont prévues pour la première quinzaine de novembre. Euh, ceci dit, nous avons bien entendu euh, les demandes qui ont été faites, la proposition du Brésil, euh, et nous allons évidemment examiner dans quelle mesure on pourrait encore ajouter un peu plus de flexibilité. C'est vrai qu'il est important que les procédures respectent les orientations et le cadre qui a été défini. On va dire que la qualité de la procédure, c'est finalement la, une garantie de la qualité de la liste aussi. Mais s'il est possible d'aménager légèrement les délais et de repousser encore de quelques semaines, peut-être deux à trois semaines, 
la date limite d'organisation des missions, ce qui nous permettrait peut-être encore de respecter les délais du 31 janvier et du 28 février qui sont au cœur des orientations. C'est quelque chose que nous aimerions être en mesure de pouvoir faire et que nous allons examiner très rapidement. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much. Uh, now, the representative of IUCN. IUCN. Thank, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Can you hear me? I hope. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for uh, the organization of this uh, extraordinary session uh, of the committee and the important matters that we are discussing. Um, I, uh, I think my colleague from ICOMOS has uh, said well uh, many of the things that uh, we would also echo in IUCN uh, in terms of our efforts uh, at flexibility and uh, to accommodate uh, missions wherever we can. And uh, we also would like to thank all of the nominating states parties uh, who are colleagues who we've worked closely with to uh, try to make this happen. Uh, I think we all agree we are in this together and uh, we are uh, making every effort to keep uh, the machinery of the convention uh, running smoothly uh, given the circumstances. Uh, several committee members uh, have asked uh, in the course of the discussion here for clarification from us on uh, the feasibility and flexibility of our processes. Um, I think, as has been said uh, on a number of occasions, we are making every effort to maintain uh, flexibility and accommodate uh, missions in these exceptional circumstances. Uh, however, uh, we're, we're neither uh, willing to compromise the quality of the evaluation process, uh, nor indeed to jeopardise the health and the well-being of our experts who go into the field and, and those uh, with whom they interact uh, with on missions. So we have, we believe, um, uh, taken a very balanced approach to uh, making every endeavour to uh, get the missions to happen, but also ensuring that we keep uh, everybody safe uh, and healthy in the process. Uh, similar to uh, ICOMOS, we've, we've been very pleased really in the circumstances to note that we've accomplished uh, more than 70% of the missions to date. Um, however, it's important to note that we don't anticipate uh, being able to complete all those missions uh, at the moment due to the combination of health and travel restrictions, uh, the broader security concerns in some cases, and or seasonal considerations. And uh, we uh, will not also proceed to finalise evaluations in the absence of a field mission, as this is a really critical ingredient to our processes and we don't want to compromise the quality of the evaluations. And of course, we need to be ensuring our compliance uh, with Annex 6 of the operational guidelines. Um, our panel normally meets face to face in early December. Uh, in this situation, we will convene our panel virtually and we have some additional flexibility through that process. Uh, we are willing to try to accommodate late missions uh, into November, uh, December and even potentially early January 2021, such that our panel can still consider evaluations and importantly for us and nominating states parties meet the deadline for the interim reports to be sent back to nominating states parties uh, by the 31st of January 2021. And then of course to allow states parties the opportunity to respond by uh, 28 February 21. Um, it's important uh, for us from an equity perspective to respect the statutory timetables uh, for evaluation so that the states parties have equal time to respond to our panel's questions and requests for additional information so that we can actually finalise uh, our panel's recommendations by March uh, 2021. Uh, I might just mention, if, if I may, uh, the point that's been raised uh, on the reopening of state of conservation reports to be tabled for 44 com, uh, as this has been raised uh, by the distinguished uh, delegation of Australia. And in that respect, we would urge the committee to give very careful consideration to which dossier, dossiers are reopened uh, to ensure we do not create a double workload uh, leading to an extended 44 com session in 2021. Uh, and we would also uh, urge the committee with respect to ensure that any adjustments that are being made here are in light of the unprecedented 
prevailing circumstances and are not seen as creating a precedent uh, going forward. So thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your intervention. Uh, dear colleagues, regarding the question raised by Uganda, Saudi Arabia, and Hungary, uh, just now Dr. Rosler uh, have provided uh, some uh, information. Uh, I, I'd like to say uh, in the past uh, month, we have been following closely the development of the prevailing situation, as well as the professional recommendations of WHO for the organization of uh, mass gatherings. We firmly believe that the conditions for convening the 44th session is to ensure the health and the safety of all participants. To this end, the Chinese government will take every possible sanitary measure and make necessary arrangements for the session. Uh, colleagues, are there any more requests for the floor? I think there is an observer, but I see also uh, Mr. Doyle has um, a point on the review of the agenda items. Um, with your permission, I can answer that, Mr. Chair? Yes. Yes. So you have. Yes, I think um, there are two different points. One is that, um, as Mr. Otone has already announced at the information session, we will have an information session uh, in December on two big items um, where not only committee members but all um, uh, states parties to this convention have an interest in, um, which would be a session on the so-called memory sites with three reports to be presented and in the afternoon to present the results of our discussions on the uh, policy on climate change. So that's an item where I think um, discussions can take place uh, beforehand. Um, in uh, the other point is on streamlining the approaches. We have already a procedure in place. Um, if you look at 197 state of conservation reports, uh, this would be uh, practically a whole week to look into that. So I agree with Mr. Doyle that in this case we can use already the existing procedure and only open um, the uh, state of conservation reports where a committee member wishes to open it. Okay, so there are uh, existing procedures. Um, for any new procedures, we would need to see what these procedures are, so I cannot answer this at this stage, but um, we are, of course, open for any suggestions which may come from the committee members. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Dear colleagues, based on the discussion we just had, shall I take it that the committee is in favor of option five, for the holding of the 44th session in 2021. If there are no objections. I declare that the 44th session of the World Heritage Committee shall be held according to option five. That is the extended 44th session of the World Heritage Committee. All state parties will be informed accordingly. Dear colleagues, we have now to agree, we have now, we have now to agree on the dates of the 44th session in 2021. In this regard, I'd like to propose with uh, the recommendation of the Secretariat that the session of the World Heritage Committee be held in June or July 2021 
If you agree with such a proposal, I will communicate with the Secretariat to define the exact dates. Do you have any objections to this proposal? Nobody wants to take the floor on this point. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I see no one requesting for the floor. Thank you. Dear colleagues, dear colleagues, shall I take it that the committee agrees that the 44th session of the World Heritage Committee will take place in June or July 2021? Mr. Chair, we have um, no request for the floor from the committee members, but there's one observer, and that's the Republic of Korea. Thank you. Okay, thank you. If there are no objections, I declare the 44th session of the World Heritage Committee will take place in June or July 2021. The Bureau and the Secretariat will follow closely the pandemic situation worldwide. I will consult them and propose a further discussion whenever necessary. Dear colleagues, I'd like to now give the floor to our rapporteur, who will present, based on our discussions, a draft decision that we may adopt. Ms. Reporter, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think we will see the draft decision on the screen. It is shown. Um, so draft decision 14 xcom 4 reads, the World Heritage Committee, paragraph one, having examined document WHC slash 20 slash 14 dot xcom 4. Um, paragraph two, recalling, recalling the extreme exceptional circumstances that prevailed in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic worldwide. Paragraph three, also recalling decision 44.com slash bur.1.3 by which the Bureau of the 44th session of the World Heritage Committee taking into account the prevailing sanitary situation worldwide, including travel restrictions, considered that the conditions for a session of the World Heritage Committee in 2020 were not met. Paragraph four decides to hold an extended 44th session in June, July 2021 in Fuzhou, China. Paragraph five also decides that all items and sub-items that were foreseen for examination in 2020 and 2021 by its previous decisions be examined at its extended 44th session in 2021 and in here we have already the uh, proposed amendment by Brazil integrated in the draft decision text. Um, paragraph six requests the World Heritage Center and the advisory bodies to extend the deadlines for completion of pending evaluation missions for nominations presented for examination of the World Heritage Committee in the year 2021, so as to allow the largest number of files from the broadest geographical base to be examined at its 44th extended session. And new paragraph seven proposed by Brazil decides that nominations presented for examination of the World Heritage Committee in the year 2021 that could not be examined at its 44th extended session be examined at its 45th session without prejudice to the nominations presented for examination of the World Heritage Committee in 2022 in accordance with the time frame foreseen in paragraph 168 of the operational guidelines for the implementation of the World Heritage Convention. And paragraph eight 
eight. Further recalling decision 43, COM 17, by which it adopted the provisional agenda of its 44th session that should have been held in 2020, adopts amended provisional agenda for its extended 44th session to be held in 2021. In here, I would just like to point out the uh, additional agenda items, um, namely item 5D, World Heritage Convention and Sustainable Development. Item 10B, report on the results of the third cycle of the periodic reporting exercise in Africa. Item 10C, progress report on the implementation of the action plans for the second cycle of periodic reporting in other regions. And item 14, uh, we have an additional component, which is um, presentation of the final accounts of the World Heritage Fund for 2018-2019, report on the execution of the budget for the Biennium 2020 and 2021, and we have the additional item here, budget proposal of the World Heritage Fund under the Biennium 2022-2023, um, and follow up to decision 43 com 14. And we have uh, an additional paragraph nine um, reading takes note of the invitation by the Russian Federation to host the World Heritage Committee session in 2022. These are all the amendments we have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any objections to this draft decision? Mr. Chair, uh, if I may, um, we were very grateful for the um, um, proposal by Brazil, as was announced by Brazil. There is uh, just a minor technical um, issue, in, and this is in paragraph six, just to clarify. It should read, requests the advisory bodies, because it's not requesting the World Heritage Center, request the advisory bodies to propose an exceptional extension of the deadlines request the, advi the advisory bodies to propose an exceptional extension of the deadlines in accordance with the operational guidelines and without creating a precedent And then you continue for the completion of pending evaluation missions for nominations to be presented for examination by the World Heritage Committee, etc., etc. This is just a, a technical um, adjustment. And um, as uh, you have heard, uh, that um, the ex advisory bodies um, have uh, this flexibility but um, not beyond the deadline of the 31st of January, which is uh, in the operational guidelines for the uh, uh, interim reports, uh, as you have seen. Um, and I hope that this is acceptable uh, to have these minor changes uh, to Brazil. Um, maybe you wish to give the floor to Brazil, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Now, the representative of Brazil, you, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for this, uh, for the, first, for the inclusion of this uh, paragraph in the, in the resolution, in the draft resolution. And I thank you, uh, of course, uh, Mrs. Russler for the, the amendments that have been proposed that I, I think that they clarify absolutely the text and goes in the line that we uh, uh, believe is the correct uh, path to follow. Uh, I just want to thank also the advisory boards for their flexibility. We have heard that uh, IUCN is uh, a little bit more flexible and we want 
to praise this uh, this uh, proposal, this attitude, and this moment. And we hope that we really can go up to the end of January with this uh, 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 this uh, this um, uh, evaluation process. So I I, I hope that ECOMOS can uh, uh, work with us in this process uh, of also. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Okay, thank you. Now, are there any objections to this draft decision? Mr. Chair, there is no um, committee member wishing to take the floor. Um, do you wish to go paragraph by paragraph, uh, or you just uh, wish to adopt the whole if there's no objection? If, uh, I think if there's no objection, we can pass it all. In whole. Okay, uh, I see none objection. Uh, I declare draft decision 14 exit dot com four adopted. Now, I'd like to invite the representative of the Republic of Korea to take the floor. <laughs> so thank you very much, Mr. Chairperson, for this opportunity to express our opinion as an observer. Uh, first of all, uh, we are pleased to see the committee achieve consensus on the upcoming session. Uh, we really appreciate all the efforts and hard work of Mr. Chairperson and the committee members and the advisory bodies. Uh, the Korean delegation has been constantly supportive of the idea to resume the normalization of the cycles as our highest priority. Evaluation of the new inscriptions and review of the state of conservation reports are of keen interest for many state parties. We should make every effort to respect the timetables provided by the operational guideline of the convention to the best, of all, best possible extent. At the same time, however, uh, let me reiterate our firm belief that the quality of work by the committee as well as the principles it is guided by should not be compromised in any case, even under these exceptional circumstances. We understand that the committee may decide to recommend some parts of SOC report to be adopted without debate uh, due to the time constraint. But those reports that may subject to further questions or reservations from the committee members will definitely have to be put up for discussion. We count on your able leadership, Mr. Chairperson, for all the success of the 44th session of the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your comment. Dear colleagues, we are now coming to the end of this extraordinary session of the committee. However, before closing the session, I would like to give the floor to the representative who may request it. I think there is Romania as an observer. No? Okay. No, I don't think so. Uh -huh. No, no Mr. Chair, I think you can proceed, please. <laughs> Okay, dear colleagues, I'd like to thank you all for your cooperation in making this extraordinary session a success. Please allow me once again to take this opportunity to forward to you the hospitality of the Chinese government. We look forward to welcoming you in China. Now I conclude the session. Thank you. <laughs>